Hello, my name is Dan Klemek with Siskin Company, and today our safety meeting is going to talk about hazard communication. Hazard communication is an OSHA standard that basically states that if you use a hazardous chemical, that the employer needs to provide communication to you on how to use that chemical safely. There are some requirements that there be a written program, that there be training and some other things. I'll touch on those real quickly as we go through today's meeting. Basically, the key components of the hazard communication program deal with obtaining material safety data sheets, having a written program as to how you're going to get information out to the employee, that products be labeled, that you identify where material safety data sheets are going to be kept, or MSDSs, that you do employee training and that you and that the employees understand how to work with these chemicals so that they don't cause any short-term or long-term harm. One of the first questions we need to deal with is how must a, la a chemical be labeled? Normally when a product is shipped there's going to be a manufacturer's label on that chemical and that manufacturer's label is frequently one of the most important things that you can use to determine the hazards of a chemical. If we take a look at the back of labels, at the back of a can, the label will give you information about the basic hazards. This is one of the first places you should look for the hazardous chemicals that you might be using. The other thing that you would look at would be the material safety data sheet. This goes into a lot of information about those chemicals. You need to understand that the warning labels that are put on chemicals are fine if you're using them in the container that the manufacturer has shipped them in. But many times we get a bulk drum or we get a bulk container and then we move it to some smaller container that we use on a job or whatever. Those smaller containers need to be labeled as well. And it's your responsibility that when you take material out of that bulk container that you appropriately label the small containers that you're using on the job. The labels need to list what the hazard is, it needs to list the product and the chemical, and it needs to give some information about the personal protective equipment or how to use that material safely. The material safety data sheet is a fairly major document that gives a lot of information about the product. It'll talk about the hazards, such as the fire, the physical hazards. It'll talk about, about vapor densities, those type of things. It'll list the hazards, the signs to look for, the first aid that you need to be aware of. It'll talk about the routes of entry. It'll give you information about the emergency procedures and the type of things you need for controlling that or disposing of the empty containers or disposing of the product itself. Material safety data sheets need to be in English. Now, if you have a predominantly Spanish-speaking workforce, the requirement is that you understand what's on the material safety data sheet, but the manufacturer is only required by law to provide those in English. And the material safety data sheets need to be available to all employees. So the hazard communication program that your employer has needs to address questions of where do I find the sheet, if I have questions about the sheet, where do I go, those type of things. The training that's required. Basically, you need to know the hazards of the chemicals you use. When you're first assigned a job, you're first hired, you get a first chemical in the, in the workplace, you need to understand what those chemicals are, how to use them, how to use them safely, and what the hazards might be associated with that chemical. Anytime that there is a new job, a new procedure, a new chemical, there needs to be retraining. So at the time of original hire or the time you're first exposed to the hazard and when the hazard changes or the job changes, then there's a requirement that you be retrained. The idea of the training is to explain the material in the hazard communication program. It's to explain the labels, the hazards, the containers, the chemicals, and the personal protective equipment you're required to use. In addition to the personal protective equipment, you need to be trained in how to use the personal protective equipment. So it's not enough to say just wear gloves. The idea is that training needs to address the type of glove and those type of things to really make sure you can work with that chemical safely. So when we start to look at personal protective equipment, this is a major component of, of the safety practices required for using chemicals safely. 
The employer needs to do a hazard assessment. This is something where it means you take a look at the hazard, you take a look at the chemical, you take a look at the type of personal protective equipment, and you really make sure that that equipment meets the, meets the requirements so that you're really protected when you use that equipment. So it's key to have the right PPE for the job. You want to inspect the PPE before you use it. You want to clean the PPE up when you're done, or if it's disposable, dispose of it correctly. And you need to replace defective equipment. If you have gloves that are being worn out or there's breakthrough or there's other type of deterioration, that needs to be replaced. Same thing with goggles, face shields, respirators, and the like. And you always want to follow your safety rules when it comes to the type of PPE required for the various types of jobs that you're doing. For eye protection, safety glasses may not be enough. In some cases, you're going to need chemical goggles or face shields to really deflect any type of a hazard that might exist. Hand protection. Many times you're going to use a pair of gloves, but the key thing to keep in mind is that not all gloves are equal when it comes to providing chemical protection. As a matter of fact, if you use the wrong glove, it's, it's possible that that glove may actually absorb and hold the chemical and it'll hold it against the skin and it may actually cause more harm to the body than if you didn't wear gloves at all. So you need to wear the right glove and you also need to be aware of something called breakthrough. The fact that chemicals can permeate glove materials and all that information is available on the MSDSs and from glove manufacturers. Foot protection in many cases is the same type of thing. You're going to be wearing some type of a boot or an overshoe to protect you from getting that material on your shoes, affecting your feet. So you'd have the same kind of criteria for the breakthrough, for inspecting, looking for damage, those type of things. In summary, the hazard communication standard is really based on a simple concept that you, the employee, need to understand the hazards of the chemicals you use, that you have a right to know the hazards and how to protect yourself. And it's important that you take that serious. Take a look at the product label, take a look at how at the material, data, material safety data sheets, and understand the adverse impact that that chemical can have. So if you start to see those symptoms in you or a fellow employee, that you can take the necessary steps and follow the first aid procedures recommended for that product. This presentation is available at www.gomsea.org.